knows a little. Meditation is uh, quite known now, huh? <laughs> well, welcome. Uh, today I just uh, wanted to share a little bit about uh, our land here, since uh, many of you are, you know, come here with you know, the intention to support the monks uh, build our, our residence. And we're only 20, about, we founded in year 2000. So just 20 years old. So still very young as a community, considering like it's a, the tradition we're in is 2,500 years. So 20 years old, we're still growing up, learning how maybe first earning our first paycheck. <laughs> So, you know, the, uh, a community can be seen kind of also like a, uh, like a, a growth of a human being, right? Uh, in Vietnamese, they say it takes uh, 10 years to grow a tree, 100 years to uh, grow a human being. And it takes probably a lot more to grow a community, a, a tradition, a lineage, yeah? So thank you for showing up. And yeah, today I'm going to share a little bit about uh, our land here so you get to know what we do here and a little bit of the history. And these are, are doing, a, I think, a monastic hiking. Yeah, a bunch of brothers and sisters enjoying the land. And we're very lucky here. Uh, the land we just hiked. This direction and this direction is now all, all protected. There was a lot of uh, there was a lot of initiative to protect the, the ridges and the the land of this uh, place, so that people like you can come enjoy. So this is very important to us to uh, also uh, live in harmony of this place, but also make available for those who are at the side. If you can't see, you could you could you come in here, or if you like. Yeah, I'm going to be showing a few slides, interesting slides. Maybe you find it. But there's a b plenty of cushion in the center here. It's probably a better view for you. You guys want to have a, little, a, a tiny taste of meditation? Yeah? We'll listen to the bell. Yeah? We're trying to make this not uh, so Buddhist, but I, I, I think I kind of need it. <laughs> Um, this, uh, when you hear the sound of the bell, it's just uh, uh, a help, an indication to help us come back to our breath. So you just sit as naturally as you can, uh, comfortably as you can, and do a little check-in to see if your body's, uh, if you're holding, if you're straining anything. So when you hear the sound of the bell, it's to come back to your body and just uh, relax and bring your inner awareness back to your body and specifically around your nostril. Now close your eyes and then breathe and be aware as the air enters your nostril, fills your lung and then raises your belly. You feel that? And breathe out, you release and let the belly deflate and so hear the sound of the bell, and that's all you need to do is follow that like an ocean wave hitting the shore of the beach, okay? But don't, you don't need to think about anything. Just think about that motion of your breath. And let it be natural. Don't force it. The image is you're watching the wave at the beach. You're not pushing the wave in. You're not pushing it out. Okay? You just watch it. And you can hear it too. So let the breath happen. You don't need to breathe. And just enjoy that with the sound of the bell.
Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that. Imagine doing that for maybe 45 or an hour. Yeah, something will happen to you. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's what we do here. And this is our, uh, our, uh, our practice. And this is, uh, Deer Park was founded uh, in the year 2000. And this place uh, was deserted. Uh, it was abandoned. The, the county couldn't, the, the government couldn't handle it. And they started renting it out. And the last thing that they rented out was for uh, the SWAT team, the sheriff's department. So this place, before we came here, was a place where they used uh, to practice shooting. So... Uh, I don't think, let me see. Oh, this is our first meeting. And Deer Park was the brainchild of a lot of Vietnamese families, immigrants that came here. And they were worried that their children uh, were losing their roots and they were not uh, in touch with who they are as a Vietnamese uh, uh, descendant. So a lot of families uh, got together and they convinced our teacher to found this center. And so this is uh, our first meeting. Uh, in this is uh, anybody guess what they, where this is that no deer park the small hall this is the small hall you see the center of the door it was gutted we gutted it out and made, that was our first meditation hall that was our only meditation hall can you imagine 200 people sitting in there well, Vietnamese people you can do that it's a, no personal space <laughs> So that was, uh, and the history of this place is, uh, it was actually a Peace Corps uh, facility. It was found in uh, one of the West, the only Peace Corps facility in the Western uh, part of the U.S. And this place was, thank you, oh, I can't read, north of Escondido is a, I can't read it on there, but it's really funny uh, text. I'll read it to you. North of Escondido in the Rockstone Mountains, there is a group of do-gooders <laughs> living a tough Spartan life on a leveled-off plateau, a section of which was once a nudist camp. Wow, I thought you might like that. <laughs> this place used to be a nudist camp. And before that, it was a commune. People who are wanting to live, you know, very 50s, 60s, kind of like, uh, they didn't want anything to do with the system. It's kind of like us a little bit. <laughs> but anyway, the history of this place was a Peace Corps training facility. Do you recognize that up there? Yeah, the monks area, then the dormitory, and then uh, actually this thing, yeah. Yeah, this thing right here is where we're sitting. You see that? I think I have a better picture of that. And these are different people who volunteer. So you know, those who don't know what Peace Corps, it was uh, started by John F. Kennedy, and it was to kind of like counterbalance a little bit what we were doing to developing countries. Like we're like just extracting resource, but like not giving back. So a lot of the affluent more nations were have programs where they would go back. It's a little controversial about doing that, but. Anyway, this is uh, the program. So many young people volunteer. So there, there's a bigger blow-up picture of it. You see that? And they had these little uh, white yurts that they use for classroom. It's kind of cool. We're, the brothers are thinking of uh, going yurt because you don't need permits. So we'll be in line with the Peace Corps. Uh. So that's where we're sitting right now on that plateau. So these are our ancestors, people who, you know, wanting to help the do-gooders. I don't like that, but that's what they call them, the do-gooders. <laughs> it's a little bit, uh, uh, we need to find a better word. And this is more 1989 picture, and that program was still happening, and those are tents. And you see like the, the cars from the uh, 60s? Nice, huh? Nice and chrome. Those cars now, uh, you know, is uh, quite a collection, right? 
And this is what we came back. You see some bullet holes? Can you see some? Yeah. So when we first came here, we had to clean. And there's, you know, the dormitory you stay in, there are like still bullets in the wall because we didn't want to like take all the bullets out. We just put the drywall. Uh, much easier because, uh, but that, they use the shoot in the, they have these little things that pop up. I was here, the last training that they did was, uh, I, I didn't know what I, I said yes to them. They said, can we do our last session here? And I said, yeah, sure. So they came Sunday and they did their whole thing. It was quite uh, educational. <laughs> yeah, and so that's the history of this place, which I really like because it's a little bit, uh, now we're transforming it. And thanks to the help of everyone, uh, all our lay friends and everyone coming to help rebuild. That's our brother Stuart, as well as learning how uh, to deal with the land, how to collect the water. We're here, a very big, what they call a, a water catchment, a, uh, a watershed, they call it. It's very prized. Because you see, it's like a big bowl. All the water, you see here, when we slow it down, all the water replenishes the groundwater, which we're losing more and more of. So this land here is so beautiful. If you're aware of that, that when we leave it alone and don't put asphalt and then, you know, gutter and then shoot it down to the ocean, where you plant and you have trees and you, you do these berms and you, uh, what do you call it, water catchment, swales, now, some people don't understand that that's what the monks are trying to do. And so they came and they cut it open so the water can flow. But the whole purpose is to make these bunch of, uh, uh, like, uh, you know, they're like, they're like smiley faces, and it just keeps water. And this is, uh, we, we love to do more of that. And it keeps erosion as well. So this is very beautiful. And this is uh, Sister Georgie, one of our first who uh, came. She taught us a lot about uh, native plants and more sustainable ways. Go yum and many uh, go some, and they're all helping us go towards uh, a less water-intensive plants. When we first came here, we wanted to make this place uh, luscious, like Vietnamese, uh, like Vietnam. You know, green leaves and tropical, and that's not sustainable. And slowly, uh, we learned that actually those plants look dead, but they're not dead. They, 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 they look dead, but when it's time, all the oils come back. and they, So that's a very beautiful way to uh, a metaphor of our, our being here, like slowly adapting to the conditions here. And, of course, we're always thinking ways to become uh, more sustainable as well as uh, eventually we would love to go off-grid, you know, to, like, produce all our own uh, electricity, produce our own, uh, get well water, as well as maybe have a farm. So food, energy, and water, uh, we would love to head in that direction. But it's tough in Southern California, especially with water. But energy, I think we can... Uh, and so, like, yeah, like I was sharing, this place, we don't feel like it's our land. We always feel like, you know, it is for people to come to find uh, whatever they need to find, to find healing, to find a moment. So we're like the tend, uh, like stewards of the land. And this is our new formed uh, Academy of Applied Peace. It's uh, uh, to counterbalance the acad military academy. You know the military academy? I'm always promoting this. Monks and nuns, we are like the military. You know, the the... They join the, the after college, you know, but we do the, like, the inverse of that. So we have to uh, think about that because this is, uh, anyway, I don't want to get into my, <laughs> just keep moving on. <laughs> uh, I'm always promoting uh, something. Path of peace and happiness. And this is our teacher, our, uh, when, he come, when he came here, yeah, by that time, year 2000, he was quite uh, well-known. So every time he came here, it would be like retreats for 900 people, 1,000. And you think the parking lot would go all the way down to the gate. And that's the, the, the thirst for uh, another way of being in the world. 
more peaceful, more ways to heal and transform. So this is uh, quite a, uh, you know, you know what we did this morning is uh, like mm, a, a small version of what, <laughs> but this is the power of, I think, you know, people mm, gathering. And this is what uh, we feel is lacking in society. There's a lot of uh, alienation and living separately. And I think uh, gathering together, but also in a natural environment and with the practice so that you can enjoy. So those are the very key elements, community and practice. And then we uh, had many retreats. So here, some of you know that this place, uh, every year we have retreats, uh, with many themes. All, uh, all kinds of people will come for retreats based on the theme so that we feel like this is what we can uh, give back to the community. Uh, we have family retreats every year, and it's all very beautiful. We, we hike up the mountain. I think some of us sat up there this morning. Pop Al brought us. Yeah, it was very, that's a, the magic place. Our teachers say you don't really come to the Deer Park, the, uh, the temple yet, until you go up there. And so this is uh, always part of all of our retreats, is to hike up the mountain to watch a sunset or to a, a sunrise. And it's always very healing for the family, too. And, of course, a lot of uh, songs, singing, and their parents seeing their child learn to meditate. It's always inspirational. And then, uh, of course, uh, we have a lot of retreats for young people so that they can find ways to take care of themselves before they get into partnership. You know, so this is uh, very crucial to uh, have... Uh, yeah, we support family, we support couples, we support, uh, but we, we, we know the core of it, that we need to teach each person know how to take care of themselves first before you, like, engage with another person. <laughs> so these retreats, we teach uh, young people how to listen to themselves and how to share from their heart and to be uh, understood and to be heard and so on. And, of course, we always have children's program. I love our community. I think I chose the right community because children, we get to, we play around a lot. And when children's are around, the monks and nuns, we, we use that ex excuse to be silly and to be a little bit uh, wild. At least <laughs> some of us do. <laughs> so we love children. And we're a little bit children-deprived during the pandemic. So we're, like, you know, having symptoms of when we see children. The, don't be surprised. There'll be bunks and nuns. <laughs> they're all around them. And that was from the pandemic. Teen camp. And we have that also yearly. And we feel so uh, disheartened for the, the teenagers. They're so, uh, having such a challenging time in our uh, modern society now with the media. And you're already enough around the campus of your school, but now... With the gadgets, uh, they, they, you know, they're, they're uh, yeah, they're, uh, what is it, lack of confidence or like self-judgment is huge. It's like an intense. So these retreats, we uh, really emphasize for them to uh, find themselves. And uh, children's program, we, we adapt, we make it fun, and we don't try to make it like adult. And then, of course, we also teach uh, young ones how to cook, how to clean, how to do chores, how to do toilet, how to do compost. The teenagers always get assigned to do compost, yeah. And the parents get to do the toilets. And the parents complain, and we say, look, your children are doing compost, you know, you do the toilet. <laughs> and, of course, uh, celebrating. Uh, we always love to celebrate this uh, new year. And I'll just uh, do a plug-in. We do have a holiday, a holiday retreat coming up. So please uh, sign up for that. Total relaxation. So like after lunch, a you know, brother or sister will sing a lullaby for you. And usually they uh, sing back by snoring. So it's a, it's a beautiful, uh, if you can handle that, it's very healing. Uh, you can sit there and uh, really find a way to 
collectively, when you rest like this, you lose it. You come out and you're like, wow, you forget time. It's much better than in your room. And of course, uh, a lot of uh, different uh, uh, Qigong, Tai Chi exercise is stick Qigong. And of course, hiking the mountain. And we have a lot of circle sharing, very important in our gatherings of retreats to allow people to share and to teach people how to share from their heart. To actually, uh, to share from the heart, you share not for other people, but you share by listening to what your inner voice, what's going on with you. So sharing from the heart, we teach people. Because a lot of time you're in dynamic and you're sharing to try to project something about yourself. So this is a very important practice to listen deeply without judgment and then also to share from our heart. So this is some of the deep practices. And of course, uh, finding true friendship. Uh, wake up retreat. This is for young adults. And they, uh, you know, they come together to discuss what is important to do in the world. So it's very nice before they get married or they start a career. They have to, uh, now I hear young people, um, they tell with me, now they just don't want a job. They want a meaningful job. Wow, so demanding, huh? <laughs> Why would you want that? <laughs> Is that true? People are like, want meaning, you know? They don't just like nine to five. Uh, <laughs> and a teen camp. The last one we had was Enough, Enough, You Are Enough. Isn't that a cool title? I had to use it again. So teaching teenagers that, like, don't listen to them. You are enough. And more wake-up retreat. Sorry, I'm... And I'll end here to share with you. Uh, this is our... When we started Deer Park, this is our fundraising campaign. Isn't that beautiful? This is all the contribution from children of the families. Pennies. They donated pennies. Now with what is uh, your gadgets, now you donate with your gadget, I hear. There's like a machine and you go, tick, tick, done. We had to count this and we had a machine that goes, tick, 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 you know, it makes a little thing. And then we, we had to take it to the bank. And, it, you know, it's like, but you can, feel, you can feel the love, right? Can you imagine that? The parent and the child bringing the little piggy bank up. Anyway, that's just the, do you have piggy banks still? Yeah, so Deer Park, if you're aware that it's built, it is supported by so many hearts, penny at a time, then you just feel so grateful. For me, that's a, and it's not for us. It is for like the universe, right? It just goes again, and then someone else gets a benefit, and they feel like they want to benefit someone else. So it's a payback, they call it. Something else? Is that the word? Payback? Pay forward or something? Pay forward? Yeah, pay forward. Yeah, I love that. That's the new economy. Yeah, to think of those who are less fortunate and you want to benefit others. And I'll quickly share. This is uh, the monk's resident. So it's an extension of the circle area. And it'll, it'll, it'll house about... Uh, about 15 more monks, potentially. So that's the, uh, the driveway going up, and it'll be right over the cliff. Just uh, let you uh, see a little bit of our plan. What we're building, there's a little entry area. You can see the stupa in the back. You see the stupa up there? The white. Uh, we have a local uh, uh, architect helping us with this. And that's about it. And this is uh, just to let you know that there's some other events coming up. We just did this one. Our first uh, event was today, the hike, uh, hikeathon, the peace walk, peace hike. And then we'll have another day somewhere in the Los Angeles area. So we'll go into the city. All the monks and nuns will go there, and we'll we'll do something fun there. Probably a cultural exchange or some kind of a, an event with lunch at a park or something. So it, it will, uh, I will call it Dana Day. 
And then uh, we'll have a mindful music festival. And we have a date for that already, April 15th. So it's a whole day of all our friends in the community who know how to do music. They're like professional musicians and they will come. And we have a whole day of different kinds of music. And then it'll culminate in the evening with uh, one of those, you know, uh, real music thing uh, in the forest. So that one uh, is also a kind of new, uh, what is it? Uh, scare Today was kind of scary for us. It's like kind of new, you know. Uh, we've never done anything like that. The music thing is also new. So we're using this uh, excuse to raise funds to build community and mess around with things. And then uh, I'll also offer an online course on uh, community and Sangha building community uh, and different ways. My years of uh, experiencing many uh, lay friends who don't want to become a monastic, but they want to build communities, and they have tried to, and some are very successful in how to create a support, an ecosystem to keep yourself from, uh, you, know, you know, staying sane, right? So this is a, a course on that. And then there will be a, uh, oh, and a building retreat. Those of you who, you know, have skills, know how to use a hammer and have built a building, with uh, plumbing, with electricity, with uh, roofing, whatever, even gardening, uh, beautifying the place. That's also, we'll have that retreat where there'll be phases where you can come and stay for a week, two week, a month, two month, and be part of the team to actually, we're looking to, we would love to build it ourselves, uh, minus the professional and co-dependent uh, things. So that's... Uh, about it, and thank you for all your support. I think there's a, I want to introduce you, I don't know, the organizer here, just to let you know that today there was a lot of beautiful, uh, uh, you know, I think you met two of them this morning, Brother Fup Lu and Lily and Jimmy. There's old Tonks, Tonks in the house. Yeah, Tonks is here. She's uh, living here. She's kind of like a Dharma bum now. You know, <laughs> she and her partner B are now part slowly be part in, uh, part of this mountain. Uh, they don't they're not leaving anytime soon. <laughs> so we we're very so grateful for the all the organizers and of course all the brothers and sisters who help organize everything else that you don't see the drinks. Did you guys try that drink? That was offered by Sister Dami. Is you in the house? Dami is our uh, a sister, the uh, daughter of one of our nuns, and she makes that professionally now. It's a uh, salty lemonade. You have to try it. It's incredible. So she offered that. And I uh, just want to do a shout out for the sandwiches that you're going to go uh, eat now. It's been offered by all the different sanghas, uh, the Vietnamese sangha especially. And one is called the... Uh, Somnyo is a grape hamlet sangha, and then a mindfulness uh, uh, sangha, Tang Tang Chan Ni, Tang Tang Somnyo, and then many lay friends, including Phuong Trang, Kim Sang, Phuong Nghia, Holly Nguyen, and Kimmy Huang. So these are all sandwiches made, they stuffed it themselves, so there's a lot of love in there, and we want to, like, yeah, shout out and Thank them for that way of offering and supporting our, our tummy today. Yes, that's it. Thank you. And uh, if you have any questions, you can hang out and come and ask me. I think it's time to like put something in the stomach. And I, I wanted to share uh, for lunch, please, uh, you know, get your sandwiches and sit together. You know, sit uh, with strangers even, sit around. Uh, find shady spots and uh, try to like connect and be in community and we'll eat in silence is that possible for about whatever and the brother or sister will invite the outside bell to indicate that we can start talking so is that doable it's to enjoy your sandwich enjoy the company and not to get into the brain right away okay so enjoy the the love in the sandwich so please uh, try your best to serve in silence as well. 
and to just have an element of uh, gratitude while we eat, while we're sitting together. And then we'll invite the sound of bell about 10, uh, 15 minutes in, and then we can start to have some beautiful conversation with our friends. Is that doable? And uh, there is a key that was found, and I uh, just lost it. Where did it 